configure a Wi-Fi router. Of course, so in the networking, we use different types of devices to communicate. Okay. So to create a simple LAN, what we required hub RS switches, right? With a for wide type of connectivity LAN. You want to connect devices wirelessly, you need a wireless access point. If you connect, you are create a LAN network wirelessly, that is a WLAN, wireless LAN, with help of wireless access point. Next is router. What is the purpose of router? When you want to communicate between different networks, you need a router. And you want to communicate from one network to another network. So then you need to require a path to reach the destination, right? What is the thing which will give? The router will tell you how to reach the destination. Router make you communicate between different networks. Router works in both LAN and when communication. Another type of device is required to connect your network to public network through internet. You want to connect your network to public network. So we need a modem. Modem make a connectivity to your uh, uh, ISP through the telephone wire or fiber optical cables. So from ISP you are getting internet to your modem. Okay, so exactly say what is ISP internet service provider? So your ISP is allow you to connect to the internet based on your subscription. Internet is your modem which give the details from your modem to your ISP connectivity is there. And your modem will give your subscription detail to ISP. ISP verifies and give the internet connection to your modem. But this is a different type of network which is coming from modem to our, our system. So what we will do is we use a router, we route between our internal private network to this public network. Okay, using PAC techniques also, of course, because for up to modem, it is single network only, single yeah. IP network only this. But router will make a connectivity. So inside we have multiple systems. And through the router, we are communicating. This is one different network, that is different network, plus multiple devices, but single public IP. How to connect? Okay, we need a PAT, port address translation. Okay, this is all in one details are there. It means you require all these things, devices to create a network. For wireless devices, wireless access point, wide devices, which are hub. From these devices, you want to communicate outside. We need a router, router to modem, you have to connect it. But all these things replaced the simple your home Wi Fi router. It contains a modem to connect internet, ISP, router, wireless access point, and as well as it is a hub by a switch for a wide type of device connectivities. It is also act like a DHCP server, DNS server, and default gateway. Okay, these modems depends upon the type of internet connectivity you've taken, we choose that modems. Some modems required, means modem part of your Wi-Fi router, modem part of Wi-Fi router, so mainly important based on the, your Wi-Fi, uh, your, uh, internet services. For example, you take ACT, Hathway, generally any local internet service provider. So they give a CAT cable, RJ45 connector, okay, UTP, STP cable from their ISP line to your home. Then it is a one set of uh, Wi Fi modem, means your uh, backside uh, WAN connector. Can you see this is? So WAN wire is simple RJ45 type, okay. If it is a fiber optical type, then generally Geo and Airtel will provide a fiber optical modems. Okay. Okay. BS channel old Airtel time, so they use telephone cables. Means instead of this um, RJ45, so we are getting a telephone RJ11 socket. Okay. For this fiber optical, we are getting fiber optical 
socket connector that's that's the point okay and a different type of uh, routers also like uh, pico tenda d link tp link uh, geo atel act are different service providers generally there are uh, giving your uh, a required uh, based on your your internet connectivity to so install um, what is this what we can say um, um, the, the the relevant uh, uh, router which is suitable for you and they will install it so you don't require to know how to install it but sometimes we need to change for example you need a act you are using the act your router has become bolder not working when you want to change it instead of calling it you can change it so no problem so you can buy the suitable router and what how to configure it first connect your what are the van port you are connected i think there is a one picture is the or last okay so of course even though if it is uh, you know you broadband uh, what it will do so they will give a fiber optical cable and fiber optical modem okay so fiber optical cable and fiber optical modem from modem to wi-fi router it is there is a connection again from there you are getting connected so sometimes it's a single router wi-fi router with along with the built-in modem direct connection sometimes you require this extra modem for connectivities okay first important is make sure it is turned on second important is connect the cable connect the van cable either you can use um, connected to that uh, LAN port from your uh, uh, laptop or PC or you can use mobile applications also available nowadays nowadays we have a mobile applications and tell me Wi-Fi passwords for a starting Wi-Fi passwords also with the back side of your router they give any details how to connect it to the Wi-Fi router either through wired connectivity or wireless also we can able to connect but I have written only for wide type of connector for make it more easy and simple. Okay. First connect it to your Wi-Fi router. Then log into the Wi-Fi router by using username password provided back side of your Wi-Fi router. Once you log in, go to the WAN section. So go to the WAN section. There you can select what type of connectivity. Okay. Type of WAN connection type, username, password, you have to specify. Okay, some places, some connections use PPPoE. Some places they use L2TP. Some are using dynamic, some are using static IP. Depends. Okay, some are using like, you know, um, uh, this is, uh, we are getting earlier ADSL. ADSL PVC connection. Okay, you know, when I was uh, that time, 2010 or 2011 time we got first bsnl internet finally i received bsnl internet connection and they didn't give in any router okay mm -hmm. i purchased my telephone but even they didn't give in any router so i brought a router from some local vendor and he given a build up like i will configure and they will, they will that will be charges you don't know how to configure like that I said no problem. That time I don't have much knowledge uh, of uh, this Wi-Fi router. I connected it. I follow the instructions and simple, very simple. That is DSL, ADSL router. Okay. Some PVC. That's the given details. Uh, van connectivity details. Okay. So even for a one or two times, you will you see the details properly. You will understand and you will do it. Okay. So connection type, username, password given a correct. So obviously, once it is successful, you started getting internet to your Wi-Fi router. In a modem part, WAN part will connect it. Second is, you should connect it to your Wi-Fi router to access, right? So go to the Wi-Fi related settings. Go to the Wi-Fi and give SSID name for a connectivity for 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz if in case your router have a dual band go to the 2.5 and 5 gigahertz so both connectivity you will get it okay 
2.5 and 5 gigahertz. Both you will connect. Okay, so give the username and password. Second one is verify the DHCP configuration. If you are okay with the DHCP configuration, check it in the DHCP configuration. Your Wi-Fi router, Wi-Fi router. Um, uh, what is that one? IP address and uh, your DHCP configuration uh, IP address range must be in the same network. Okay, so if you are changing DHCP configuration, you must change the IP address of your router. Okay, then so once you are checked DHCP configuration or make it make sure it is enabled, that is enough not to do anything. So guys, once again, go to van first, configure the van. So then you will get connected. So then the internet is work, start working. Second, your SSID configuration for both the bands. If you have two bands, then to both the bands you should configure. Okay, try to connect to your Wi-Fi. Second, check the DHCP. Make sure that is DHCP is given correctly or enabled. That's it. So save settings and log out and try to connect it to your Wi-Fi router. Make sure they are getting internet or not. On the LED status, you see the internet is blinking or not. Okay, so that is it. Once it is working, good. Not working, what to do? Not working, you given correct only, but something, something missing. You change something, IP address, wanted. You don't know what you change because it's the first time. What you will do? There is a reset button. Press the reset button and every setting will be resetted. So again, connect it and get it. So that is the point what I'm trying to see. Okay. That is what I'm trying to see. Okay. So I think you got to know now. If required, do the MAC address mainly. But three points only remember WAN, SSID, DHCP. That's it. You configure van, connection type, username, password given by the service provider. First is login. First is login to your Wi-Fi router by giving the details of in a back set of Wi-Fi router. Okay, by connecting to Wi-Fi wi router by the help of back set given details from your laptops. Okay, next one is login. Then go to the van section. Give username, password, and connection type. Second, go to the Wi-Fi section, give the SSID name and password for both the bands 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Verify the DHCP configuration. Make sure it is enabled. Save settings, log out. And now try to connect it to your Wi-Fi router from your mobile phone or laptop. Make sure you are getting internet. If something goes wrong, it means maybe in your settings you are not given properly, that's why you are not getting. You find your mistake. Means if it is not working, connect back and check the settings. If something is problem, if you don't know how to ch change it, you can reset it. So last part, leave it. So remember the first points only. First is connected to Wi-Fi router. Second one is configure van. Third one is configure Wi-Fi connectivity, SSID configuration for both the bands. Third one is verify the DHCP. Save settings, sign out, and try to connect from your Wi-Fi router to from your laptop or mobile phone, connected to your Wi-Fi router, and now check it, are you getting pays or not? That's it. Don't worry about remaining points. If I adding, I, I can keep adding, but stick it to the basic configuration. Understand guys, what to tell? Okay, remember four, five points. Whenever it, you got a question, just uh, count your fingers. Four, four points or five points, okay? First you put a count your fingers and go through one by one step, okay? <laughs> Don't do like that. Other, uh, if you do like that, you will forget, but practice it. 
that is what the what that point. Okay, how to configure Wi-Fi router? Connection, connection, and login. Connection, login, configuration, logout, test. Five points. Okay, but explain those five points. Connect, connect to the WAN cable. Connect to your uh, laptop LAN cable. Okay, then log in to your Wi-Fi router by giving bottom details. In the at the bottom of Wi-Fi router, so how to log into your Wi-Fi router? Username, password, and URL is given. So log in. So go to WAN session. Give your WAN details. Username, password, connection time. Next, go to the Wi-Fi session. Give your SSID name, password for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies. Okay. And what is the third configuration? Check the DHCP. Make sure it is enabled and check the DHCP range. That's it. Not to do anything because it's a home. I'm not doing anything. Okay. Save it. Save it. Save the other settings. Log out. Okay. Log out and disconnect the wire connection. Connect with the wirelessly and make sure you are able to connect and check are you getting internet or not. So once it is internet came, that's working. Try with your mobile phone and as well as a laptop. So simple. Okay. So remaining is connection related issues. You have to change the password for your Wi-Fi. Again, log in, go to the SSID session. Okay, we are Wi-Fi related session, change the password. And compulsory give encryption. Password encryption is compulsory. Because password must be secure. Okay, so if password is compromising very clearly. So what you will do it, you can create a MAC binding. You can create a MAC binding. Only the specific devices are allowed to connect the well-known devices. Remaining devices from neighbors' devices, friend devices, you can block it. Okay. Okay. So uh, like this. Um, so unable to connect it to your Wi-Fi, there is a possibility SSID passwords are uh, changed, or maybe your uh, MAC address is in the deny list. Maybe your date and time of device is uh, different from your Router. Router is you configured, but you didn't configure the correct uh, date and time in the router. Or maybe in your system, the date and time is different. Is it okay? Properly configure date and time. Okay. So you can also log into your Wi Fi router, check the connectivity stat points from your internet to your Wi Fi router. Connection field means either your internet is having some problem from ISP to your system or internal configuration. Okay. Are you paid the bill or not? Compulsory check it. Okay. So these are the points you are um, completed. So finally it is troubleshooting thing. So what is SOP? Standard operating procedure. It is a step-by-step -step instruction compiled by the organizations to help workers daily carry out complex. It is a instruction, check mark, checklist is there. So what is your duty today? So what is the task is given? Based on the task, there is a checklist. Are you completed this part, this part, this part? You follow the steps, you will complete the task very easily. This is a better plan. Yeah. 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 Okay, so a standard operating procedure. What is KEDB? Non error database. What is non error database? When you got an issues, we'll create a database which is include your issue, probable causes, and a resolution 
how you resolve. So it will be there in the database. It helps the people to understand what are the routine issues and uh, resolve, solution, solving the issues and finding different solutions also. And what is a troubleshooting model? When issues occur, so how to look at the issue? That is a troubleshooting model. How to resolve it? The steps you have should involve it. Identify the problem. First, you should know the issue. Understand the issue. Establish probable causes. Different things may cause this one. For example, first issue only. System restart itself again and again. There is a probable causes are there. One is CP is getting overheated or SMP is not providing enough power supply. Which one it is? You have to test it. Is the CPU related? Is the CPU is getting overheated? Means check the CPU heat sink paste. CPU heat sink fan is it properly assembled or not? Is it dust is there? Clean it. That is one theory. So check it. Next one is is SMPS is given as per the required rating. It is there. Or it is a given low rating. Okay. So possibility is there, right? So what it is, test the theory. Once you are confirmed, which is the actual problem, then implement the solution. You have to plan and implement the solution. Verify the fix. So make sure it is working and do preventive measures. If the issue should not be occur again and again. And you have to document finding. Means what is an issue? What is what causing the issue? What is the issue? What causing the issue? What is the implementation or solution you made to solve the issue? Is it working? What are the preventive measures you have taken? So then issues won't be repeated. So that is a document. Right? So you keep it. This is a troubleshooting model. These documents go to CMDB, Configuration Management Database. From there, it will go to the KDB, Known Error Database. What are the frequent issues, errors, error codes are stored in this KDB? So any member who are into the organization can, whenever they have a time or when in the starting time only, they will go what are the different issues and try what are the solutions are previously made it. So they will understand. So whenever issues occur, next they can directly understand how to resolve it. Okay. So that is the troubleshooting method. I just I will tell the solutions and the system restarts itself again and again possible to CPU or heated. Second, another point is if SMPS is not providing enough power supply, then given consumption. So like a so your total consumption is 300 and you are giving 300. Okay. So then maybe one pen drive is connected one. Uh, new hard disk is connected so it required more 20 percent 30 uh, watts or 50 watts more power case required so it is not enough system is restarted so what you will do better to give always power supply little above than a requirement next you power on your system nothing on the screen it's a blank screen you may hear the continuous beep sound power led is blinking no hard disk led blinking one second. Hello. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I got a phone. That's why I get you disturbed. <laughs> Simple. Bajaj Finance phones. Okay. Okay. Uh, what? Where are we? Uh, power LED is blinking. It means there is no power supply related issues. Generally, it is not uh, SMPS or uh, power on related issues. Okay. So, in that case, it's better to check other things like a LEDs, uh, keyboard LED is blinking or not, hard disk LED is blinking or not, like that. So, then it is a plausible, it is a post related issue. What is a post power and self test? That's the point is 
the primary components like CPU, RAM, motherboard, motherboard uh, uh, power distribution to the motherboard components. So that is also power and motherboard, uh, non motherboard components also issues. Not hard disk, not a CD RAM. Okay, it is motherboard, CPU, RAM. So these three points. Okay, so if any failure is occurring in this one, you may post failure. Nowadays, we've got a postcards and as well as on motherboard LED statuses showing it is CPU related or RAM related, hard disk related, or maybe it is VGL related. Which one has a problem, it will display. So like that, we can understand. If it is a RAM related earlier, and now most of the time is RAM related. RAM for desktops, it is more dust will form on it. So you have to clean the RAM edges clean the RAM slots and try to system again. If, uh, cross verify your RAM also always better with other RAMs, with other PCs, whether make sure it is RAM is working or not. If not working, because we don't purchase any postcards, right? So for a home troubleshooting, if you are doing it, so we don't reuse different equipment, simple equipment something. If RAM is not working and you verified with other systems, you have to buy a new RAM. Okay, or cross verification, put another RAM into this machine. Okay, different RAM into this machine, make sure working or not. And you power on your system and on the screen it is showing CMOS check some bad or error. So it is because of CMOS batteries, no power or low power, we are getting this CMOS check some error. Okay. You are getting, you power on your system, on the system you are getting portable device, not found, no portable device, no boot disk like that. Possibility is either operating system is corrupted or hard disk is corrupted. Go to the BIOS settings, confirm your BIOS settings, go to the BIOS setting, so confirm your hard disk is available or not. If hard disk is showing, it's a voice related, hard disk is not showing, then check the connectivity first. Okay, cross verify this hard disk, make sure hard disk is working or not. If hard disk is not working, replace the hard disk. Okay. Amazon Flipkart. Hmm? Amazon Flipkart. I know. Okay, if hard disk is working, OS related, so startup repair. Try start a repair in case of portable files are corrupted. Otherwise, reset this PC. Or if you have a system image backup, restore it. Otherwise, reinstall the OS in case nothing is working. Okay. Another one is your hard disk is not working. And uh, so you are add a new hard disk. If you have a system image backup, you can restore it. Otherwise, install a OS applications and settings. You have to do it. Okay. So different troubleshooting options are set up. Boot MGR missing. Boot MGR is a bootloader of Windows operating system. In the screen, you are getting a boot MGR missing. You power on your system on the screen, boot MGR is missing. It means either it is a possible your hard disk related issue, mostly operating system, bootable files are connected. That is a very old time we are getting boot NA, boot L, um, bootloader missing issues in our olden days but uh, from windows 7 8 9 10 so we are not getting this issue often but sometimes you will get it so what happened some people try dual booting systems dual booting systems like one partition they have OS, another partition they try to install another type of OS. maybe both are windows 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 linux windows ubuntu some people inside a windows, they install a Ubuntu also. So on windows, they try to install a Ubuntu. So you can switch from windows to Ubuntu kind of stuff. So drag grab a bootloader, replace, uh, try to override the boot MGR. Sometimes you'll get a boot MGR missing. So if you are ask uh, uh, the user, so what they have done, so before you are getting this issue, in case it's a dual booting kind of stuff, mostly we don't know how to repair it, but try like this. 
connect the installation disk and find out what is your Windows uh, operating system location, like a C drive. Okay. And connect your installation disk. Go to the repair options. Go to the command prompt. Copy your inside your CD-RAM. There is a boot MGR file is there in inside your CD-RAM or a installation media. It can be pen drive also. So copy the boot MGR to the C drive. Okay. So then restart your PC and it may work. Otherwise, remove all the drives and reinstall OS freshly. Okay. Uh, as sometimes startup repair is also works. So you restart your system multiple times. It automatically take you this point. Okay. So there you can find uh, advanced options, startup repair, troubleshoot, advanced option troubleshoot. So another one is Windows key cloud. You power on your system. Uh, you got a Windows logo and bottom of Windows logo, it is key loading symbol. What is this key loading symbol? So something bootable files have some issues. So restart your system two, three times. Then it will take you to the troubleshooting options. Okay, go to troubleshooting, advanced options, startup repair. Okay. Uh, application issues. Sometimes certain applications not working properly. It may be creep caching. Keep crashing. It won't open. It will, it will be creep caching kind of stuff. Okay. One of the thing is virus. Virus may affect to destroy your application. So use some proper antivirus to scan your registries. Example, malware bytes or uh, scan your system. That may work. Otherwise, so try to repair your application by go to control panel and select your application, right click repair. Another one is try upgrade your application. Try to update your application if possible. <laughs> or uninstall application. But if you are uninstall application and you want to reinstall it again, so uninstall application, restart your PC and reinstall the application. to go to advanced options from working window okay. this is options go to the settings uh, update and security recovery under advanced options <coughs> your system ever stop working everything is very funny way it is working you open one application it is open with uh, some other uh, extension kind of stuff Okay, completely um, stop working like that is given a lot of confusion. Even you do not have any data, but your drives are showing full. In that cases, you can restart, reset this PC. Reset PC is a last to draw wrong kind of stuff. Okay, in case um, what is the purpose of resetting this PC? It's like a, it will re reload your OS and it remove your applications and settings from your system. So. That's it is better not to do resetting because it will take three to four hours minimum time. Minimum time. So if required, the system is not at all uh, listening to anything. Okay, then you can go for resetting this PC. Different options give different type of issues purpose. We'll use it. Startup repairs, UEFI settings, Startup settings, system restoration, updates, and system image recoveries. The so different options for different type of problems. Okay. What is a safe mode? Minimal OS used for a troubleshooting. In safe mode, mainly the device drivers, background services, and applications won't work here. System restoration. System restoration restore the system to earlier point of uh, system restoration point where your system is working good. Now my system is working very good. I create a system restoration point. I'm utilizing my system after a few days, means after three, four days, I try to install some application or by changing some setting, system not functioning properly. Not functioning properly. So already I have a good condition. 
system restoration point is there. So I'll go back to that system restoration point. So after restoration point, what are the changes I've done, like installation of application, uninstallation of applications, updates, upgradations, settings, all these things gone and get back, go back to the previous one. Blue screen of death. This is a most common question. Even people now don't know, but they will ask this question. Now definitely yeah, they will ask. Okay, because that's become more public knowledge now. What is a blue screen of death? It is a stop error. Guys, any conflicts, issues, uh, or uh, uh, memory related issues, addressing related issues, IRQ related issues, or conflicts related to all these things, occurs at a kernel level, it, you, it will throw a blue screen of death. Maybe because of you are installing new hardware and new uh, uh, updates you have done to your uh, device drivers, installation of device drivers, change of BIOS settings, hardware related settings you have done in a BIOS, okay. Uh, by installing some application that is influence on the devices and device drivers, it may cause a blue screen of death. So confusion means there is a something which cannot be uh, with Microsoft operating system will confuse with uh, something it is occurrence. There is some update or event or uh, some change or a conflict is occur or uh, that's become confused to your Microsoft operating system. What it will happen? It stop the machine and take into this screen risk of death. When it is occur, carefully read the stop code. Carefully read the stop code and wait for 100% completed. Let it reboot. Once it is 100% completed, it will reboot for you. Once it is rebooted, mostly issue won't be occur again. If it is occurring again, so you have to understand on which situation it is occurrence. Either it is by opening some application or by running some program or maybe without doing anything, it is occurring. Before BSOD occurs, what you have done? Did you update anything? Did you install any drivers? Or uh, did you install any hardware? So you have to revert it. In case of you have a system restoration point is created before all these things happen. Yeah, you have a system restoration point. Go to safe mode and go to system restoration point and restore it. Or you can go to this advanced uh, uh, recovery options. Okay, there you can also find a uh, system restoration and try the system restoration and you can resolve it. Okay, so that is a PSO. So what, why we are getting BSO at kernel level? Means your hardware drivers uh, issues that in that level and application related there is a conflicts uh, occurs in the operating system so it will be a body need to try to resolve itself by restarting itself 100 percent completed it will try to resolve by restarting conflicts will be automatically resolved by 100 percent sometimes it won't be resolved it will take multiple restarts so you have to understand what is the stop code and you have to do as per that one. And second one is what happened to your system? Is your C drive is full? So make sure some data should be removed from your C drive. Okay, because if C drive is full, also you will get this BS body. Okay, some hardware is added or maybe some hardware settings are changed in BIOS. Or maybe new update, maybe some application influence your device drivers. So roll back to the previous, okay? If you change any, if you install application or updates, upgradations, settings you have done, so you can try system restoration. It helps you to resolve BSOD, okay? Try it, guys. Try uh, what is a BSOD property. So here also I've written what to do, okay? Yes, any event, any issue is occur at your system, it goes for a event log. Any successful or failure, it goes to the event log. So try to go 
to the uh, your event viewer and in that one go to windows log go to these sections see what is going on okay service management already i told what is service management you can change the service status startup type to the automatic to manual manual to disable also what is automatic service type for a service so this services will be start immediately when system is started Make it start running when system is started. Manual, either user has to be started or maybe some triggers occurs, then only service will be started. Disable the service, never start. Okay. So this is also uh, we discuss. So certain applications, if you are no longer utilizing, better uninstall that applications. If sometimes you will use it, sometimes you are not using it, Disable or a manual that service man, in the service management startup type make it disable or manual. Disable the startups so those applications won't start immediately from your task manager. Close applications, close browser tabs if unnecessarily it is running. Don't use more than one antivirus. Regularly clean your browser histories and remove percentage temp prefetch and temp files if it is not deleting it automatically. Try to scan your registry regularly, okay, with any antiviruses, okay. Uh, remove data from your C drive. Copy if it is important, copy into another drive or external hard disk. If not necessary, please delete it, okay. Use this cleanup and this fragmentation and error checking to make your disk healthier, okay? This will reduce lagging of your PCs, optimize level it will perform. Increase the RAM capacity depends upon your system, okay? And uh, change of SSD, the hard disk to SSD, also one optional change, but really there is no difference. Okay, if system is still very slow, you try everything, nothing is working, go to the settings, update and security, recovery, reset this PC, get started, use, keep my files, your files won't be deleted, but your application settings, everything will be deleted, OS will be reloaded. Already I told it will take minimum four to five, uh, three to four hours to done. So you have to compulsory put the charger if it is a laptop compulsory put a charging full charging is required keep the charger and then click on this option and wait don't uh, interrupt the process that's the point yeah. device manager also help you to manage your devices sometimes so certain devices may not work because of there is a driver related issues okay so go to the device manager, check the related uh, device related drivers. Now open it, see the general, make sure that is working or not. If it is not working, so uninstall the drivers, reinstall new drivers, check the new drivers name and all. So make sure that is sortable drivers are installed or not. Okay. Another one is you can go to drivers tab, uninstall the drivers, restart your PC. So then it will reinstall the thing. So it will make work. Okay, so finally we got up to here, but something got changed in middle. Okay, no problem. Networking troubleshooting issues, guys. Depends upon this cross marks. Yellow patch means it is network is connected, but no internet. Yellow patch means network is connected, um, but no internet. Cross mark means this is not connected, not connected. Cross mark means it's not connected. Cable problem. Either this side or other end of the cable, not connected properly. LED, both LEDs blinking means connected and good condition. At least to list, activity LED should be blink. One LED at least should, it should be blinked. Okay. You can, if device, 
it's disabled, you can enable it if in case it's not connecting. Okay. Next, make sure how it is connected, wired or wireless. Second, check the IP address of all the devices. Make sure all are in the same network. Normally, the DHCP will give you IP address, right? So IP address given by DHCP, generally all are same network. But check the correct proper IP address. For example, you want to test the connectivity between, you want to test the connectivity between your one PC to another PC. You want to test the connectivity. What is the testing command? Pin command. Pin from PC1. This is the PC1. From PC1, go to command from pin to PC2 IP address. If you are getting reply from the PC2 IP address, it is ping is accessible. No issues, no problem with the connectivity. If you are getting destination host not visible, ping paid. That is issue. It may be because of the device is not available. The device is disconnected or not available or it is not requiring any ping issues. Okay, not connected. Issue is there. Okay, request time dot. What is request time dot? Maybe it is system is not available, not connected, or not accepting any packets. Uh, or a firewall. So not accepting means firewall. So I'm pinging to a IP address. The IP address is correct, and there is a good connectivity. Reply from. I'm getting a destination and not reachable. Maybe this. Uh, a PC is not available, not connected, or wrong IP address, wrong IP address possibilities. Okay, so this is my IP address configuration. Okay, and I'm trying to ping to someone. I'm getting this request time. If you are observed, it is a 16 minus 16 is there, and here I'm using 17 different network. It is does not find the path to reach the destination. Wrong IP or not find a path to reach the destination. There's no path, no network is available like that. That's why I'm getting request time dot. Sometimes request time dot within the same network, instead of host not reachable, you are getting a request time dot. Possibility is either system is not available, not connected, wrong IP address, plus firewall. Possibility of firewall is also there. So that is the one. Okay. To make a communication between two devices, then both network portion must be same or a network ID must be same. Then they will communicate. And those IP addresses should not have a conflict with any other systems also. Okay. You are not getting internet, internet is issue like one system to another system pinging is happening, but from outside to inside, inside to outside is like you have a lot of switches between your system to actual router gateway. A lot of switches, a lot of devices are there in between. So you have to check uh, whether can able to reach up to gateway. If you are able to reach up to gateway means you can cross the gate. Can you reach the gateway or not? So ping to the gateway. Okay. So like that. Uh, already I have discussed API address. If you got API address means it's a DHCP server related issues. Either it is DHCP server is not available or disconnected or not giving IP address to your PC. That's why your system IP address is showing, showing like this. Okay, already I discussed uh, Okay, normally system should show IP address like this, but it is showing like this. It is an issue. So Check the DHCP server and try to restart DHCP services and connectivities. First, solve the DHCP related issues. Second, in our PC, disable enable the adapter or use the command card IP config release, IP config renew. Release means it flush or remove dynamic configured IP addresses. Dynamically configured, automatic configured IP addresses will be removed from your adapter. Renew means it will try to get IP address from DHCP server again. Even network is changed, but IP address is not changed. That time also these commands will help. Okay. Yeah, this is totally your one. What we have discussed from last uh, 19 days or uh, last uh, 15, 20, 15, 16 days.
So that is completely done. Okay. Go and read it, guys. If you have any doubts, put it in a WhatsApp group also. Uh, if you have any questions regarding a specific topic, uh, put it in a gr uh, group. So then uh, we can able to, I will inform related information. Okay. I think I shared all the okay. documents. If not, I will share it again. Yeah. So I already CGS. Go through this one first. Then remaining CGS questions. If you have any doubt, if I miss any question to explain, or if anything is missing from our notes, okay, because I have given notes here also. One notepad notes is there now. That is eighth batch. So compare with that batch. Anything I'm missing, also we can add it. Okay. Find everything. So practice step. Okay. That's it, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just to stop the recording. Uh, so tomorrow there is class.